visceral pain uh, relates to pain in the organs of the body. So it could be the chest, the abdomen, or the pelvis. Most likely it's the abdomen and the pelvis. Visceral pain is somewhat unlike other pain syndromes in the sense that visceral pain activates the autonomic nervous system. That would mean specifically the parasympathetic nervous system or the sympathetic nervous system or both, which is why a lot of patients who have visceral pain also have associated nausea, vomiting, and sweating. More women than men suffer from visceral pain and specifically from chronic pelvic pain, and by far, unfortunately so. And when we think about chronic pelvic pain, we're thinking about pain that comes from the organs such as uh, the bladder, for example, the uterus, the fallopian tubes, the ovaries, or, or the prostate, for example, in men. And there's a lot of overlap among the sort of chronic visceral pain syndrome. So for, for example, if uh, someone has chronic pelvic pain, he or she may also have concurrent fibromyalgia or concurrent interstitial cystitis. So there's a lot of overlap there among the chronic visceral pain syndromes. Well, it's something called viscerosomatic convergence. What that means is this. Think of the nerves that would start from the small intestine, travel from the small intestine all the way to the spinal cord, say at level T10. Those are called visceral afferent fibers. Well, there are cutaneous nerve fibers that will also start, say, from the skin and travel from the skin to the same spinal cord segment, say T10. Well, those nerves that travel from the skin uh, converge at the same level in the same location as the nerves that travel from the gut and end up in the spinal cord. And that's called the sort of that's called the viscerosomatic convergence of nerves. And that's why patients will say, for example, that they have belly pain. And at the same time they may feel like they have referred pain in the low back. Well, I, I think that, unfortunately, a lot of patients who have visceral pain, and specifically pelvic pain that's chronic, also have concurrent depression and anxiety. It leads to, it can lead to a lot of familial discord, and when we're talking about pelvic pain, either in the man or the woman, that unfortunately does can lead to sexual discord and sexual dis difficulties among partners. The treatment strategies consist of medical or pharmacologic therapies, and a lot of patients who have visceral pain, and specifically pelvic pain or abdominal pain, are on opioids, long-acting opioids and sometimes short-acting opioids as well. They can be moderately effective, but there is emerging evidence that other medications, like the tricyclic antidepressants, for example, medications like amitriptyline or doxepin, can be useful in treating visceral pain, and specifically chronic pelvic pain. Uh, the gabapentinoids, for example, gabapentin or pregabalin can be useful in treating visceral pain as well. So those are medications that I think frontline front practitioners should consider when they encounter patients who have visceral pain. There are a host of injection therapies that we use as pain specialists that can be helpful as well. For example, they might be um, a celiac plexus nerve block for patients who have intractable pancreatic cancer or who have intractable pain from organs like the liver or the pancreas or the gallbladder. Uh, there's a, another plexus called the superior hypogastric plexus and that receives input from organs like the prostate, uh, the bladder, the uterus, for example, the vagina uh, in women or the testes in men. So for those patients who have chronic, perhaps benign pain or cancer pain in those regions, a superior hypogastric plexus block can be very useful. That would be the injection of local anesthetics and then a neurolytic substance like alcohol can be used to destroy those nerves and provide longer relief. And then also there's more evidence now that spinal cord stimulation can be helpful. That is dorsal column stimulation can help patients who have persistent pelvic pain uh, via different approaches uh, or even a condition like pudendal neuralgia that can cause pain in the sitting bone area or the anal region or the area between the anus uh, and the vagina in women which would be called the perineum. So those, those 
neuromodulator devices I think are important for frontline practitioners to know about for referral purposes in case the medications are not particularly helpful, the uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, their pain psychology is not particularly helpful or physical therapy isn't helpful. Consider nerve blocks, consider even spinal cord stimulation to help reduce the pain of uh, chronic pelvic pain or chronic visceral pain in the abdomen or the pelvis.